Hi, good evening and welcome to the Town of Deerfield Select Board Board of Health meeting for April 22nd, 2020. It is 6, uh, 6 p.m. in the main meeting room, um, in the municipal offices at 8 Conway Street in South Deerfield, Mass. Um, meetings normally held at the municipal offices are, are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with the governor's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 20. Um, there's a web browser. Uh, you can view this meeting online, um, www.anymeeting.com uh, forward slash 812-477-057. Pound. And, and you can call in as well at four, uh, excuse me, um, 1206-331. 4836 and the pin is 812-477-057 pound. So welcome everybody. Welcome everybody on the line. So we'll call the meeting to order and we have some uh, scheduled appearances um, at 615 is um, Barbara Hancock uh, talk about um, tax bills due extensions or due date extensions, town meeting elections, kind of that, that kind of those topics and we have another meeting um, a hearing around 7 um, for Donald Dubendorf about marijuana article for Harvest um, Sons Mass and um, do we want to wait till 615 to um, Barb, or do couldn't we just move forward on that or do you, you want to hit on other it's, stuff it's first? a it's just a just you can rearrange your own meeting. Oh, I'd love to do that. Well, do I'd that. I'd like to get Barb out of here. <laughs> Barbara, as soon as possible. Barbara you, I know. Barbara, Barbara would like to here all home. day. <laughs> You've been here all day. <laughs> so, um, sure. yeah, please jump on in. Yeah, uh, a lot to consider in this new environment. And um, namely, probably um, on everyone's mind are, are the tax bills, uh, which are due May 1st. Um, and we were recently granted the authority to extend um, the due date to June 1st. Um, I have a few thoughts. It's ultimately your decision to do that or not do that. But um, sitting in my office, I just know that these bills were mailed out 28 days ago. And a majority of people in good faith have paid their bills. Mm -hmm. um, the taxpayers of Deerfield are um, very conscientious of their bills. And we have an excellent um, payer rate, if you will. Um, it's the last week of collections that uh, boils down to the escrow companies um, paying the money that they've already escrowed from our residents to pay their um, tax bills. So we're, we're kind of primarily waiting on those payments. I think a majority of people um, have paid their bills. There's another week and some people do wait. Um, mm -hmm. But I will say that I was concerned about the June 1st deadline. Um, and, and some of the things we're going to talk about tonight, I, I'm going to hit upon this several times because yeah. we're trying to weigh um, being compassionate to people, but also um, public safety and our own safety and, mm -hmm. and to stand behind our encouragement that we want people to stay home. So right. by saying June 1st is the due date um, and the governor's kind of stay at home closed businesses is May 4th, I'm just worried about announcing that and encouraging people to say, oh, let's just wait and come in after they open May 4th. And, and right. I just don't want to encourage any foot traffic, quite honestly. Right. Um, the other thing, too, is um, a delayed due date um, sounds great. <laughs> but um, in, in, in the short, short of it, a, a example, a $2,500 tax bill, um, if they got an extra 30 days, would have about $28 in interest. So um, we're not talking about a huge relief here. Right. Um, it would enable people to pay something a little later without the $28 or what have you, but um, they can do that now if someone's kind of struggling and yep. you know it's between making the car payment and, and then make the mortgage and make the tax payment a week or two later, they can do that. We are not, um, we're not doing any you know, kind of collection processes, if you will. Right. So the, the worst of it would be a little bit of interest. So, you know, right. it could be $10, $15 if anyone's interested in finding out what it would be. Um, I have done that for a, a couple people that were just curious. Um, yeah. I normally do um, issue demand 
fillings, which is an extra fee added on to the bills that have not been paid, and we usually do that within two weeks of the due date. Um, and I think uh, in this present environment, it's, it's wise for us to postpone that. And that in itself would save twice as much as the interest um, right. due June 1st. So right. I think there are some ways that we can be compassionate. Um, I don't know that the June 1st um, due date is going to help many. Um, weighed with the safety concerns of, of encouraging people to wait and come down, I'm not completely comfortable with, but um, mm -hmm. I certainly defer to you all right. for that. So, so Barbara, you wouldn't have a problem not sending out demand notices for yeah. uh, until people I, I, I had a think chance that's, to reach um, it's, out to it's you? Right. It's okay. not regulated by any um, statute um, like the interest is. We right. couldn't, we couldn't um, defer the interest without that legislation. Right. Um, but the scheduling of our um, collections, if you will, is within the realm of discretion in our office. So um, I, I could, I'm totally, com I'm actually uncomfortable sending out a demand bill, you know, right now. In Two May. weeks, right, yeah. right in um, May. So you wait till the end of so, the month right. anyways to do um, that. We, we also have to balance our revenue and all that kind of thing and of encourage course. payments and, and what have you. But right. um, I think that um, delaying the demand bills um, is something that we're going to do for sure. I, right. I would see I'm behind that 110%. Yeah. So. Um, okay. I, I guess I just want to make sure that people reach out to you yep. if, they're, if they're having difficulty. Yes. Yeah. And, and you work something out with them. And yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I just don't want people to feel like we were breathing down their necks. Yeah, all. no. I, I, mean, I don't I, think so. Totally we yeah, we've tried to keep very open communication with people and um, encourage them to call. And we update our website, and um, we've got the lockbox outside now, so people yep. can um, drop off their payments without mailing them, or if they're not comfortable doing it online. Um, finding ways to kind of live in this new world where we're all so used to seeing each other face to face, and you right. know, having that kind of um, connection. And um, but we just have to do it a different way now. So. Yeah. Um, so the whole collections, as I said, I do have the, um, you know, flexibility to kind of change that a little bit. We used to do tax title um, takings by the end of June, and yep. I just see all of that at just least a month deferred, you yeah. know, the demand billing and the, t and the tax title maybe a month or two. Or, um, so, so definitely looking to be, you know, compassionate. Um, right. I, I have to say that the residents of Deerfield uh, – are really up to date on their taxes. Though. Absolutely, you have <laughs> you done know? a great job. In that, um, in I that think, realm. The, yeah, I think a lot of people, you know, these are working families that are being affected. I, you know, yeah. everybody's working hard or business owners, but um, I think a lot of people do have escrows, so yeah. um, that that's gonna kind of got that insurance for them to to cover. Right. But yeah, yep, yeah, always willing to uh, to work with people. Right. Um, Whatever. I'd rather, my, my, my theory is I, I'd just rather, you know, kind of get ahead of a problem instead of ignore a problem. Grow. So, yeah. you know, if you think you're going to be behind, let's talk about it. Let's stay on top of it. Let's do a little bit at a time and just right. don't let anything grow and be a burden to anyone, you know, mm -hmm. um, their tax bill being one thing. So. And you said... We're kind of on target of last year, anyways, right now. Yeah, I've uh, I've been tracking. Up. Yep, I've been yeah. tracking uh, revenue and yep. um, the outstanding bills still, and and I don't see anything. Again, I don't it's know that we up. would because kind of everybody, you know, they're making their escrow payments. They've yeah. already paid into that. Yep. Um, you know, if this drags on, you know, longer and longer and longer, you know, perhaps that would change. Right. But this billing, you know, it's kind of happening. We, we had sent out the tax bills, to, you know, just after the governor's announcement in March. Right. And so, um, People yeah. are really on schedule already. So, yeah, kind of um, rolling with that, yeah. So, again, I would feel comfortable more with that collections end of it than the um, moving the date. This doesn't seem like it's going to help enough people to make a difference at the moment. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, leave it the way it is? Yeah, I, I just want people to feel comfortable reaching out to Barbara. Mm -hmm. That's all. Yep. And if if we make an effort to let people know, I don't know if we can put something on the website just to contact you if Absolutely. there are problems yeah. mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, we're very sympathetic. And, I, I mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't want people to be stressed out. Yeah. But on the other hand, I, you know, the banks have been collecting money all year, so there's no reason why they shouldn't be paying Right. Us. They're the ones that, <laughs> that usually pay so. the last week. So right. really hate cutting 
Cutting slack to those. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the big dollars that we wait for at that point. Yeah. Um, uh, I did make a few notes for tonight's Please. meeting just yeah. because yeah. there's so many things um, that are kind of swirling around. Yeah. And, um, I, I Another thing as we're on the topic of um, real estate bills and, and, you know, the coming fall and what have you, because I'm always thinking about um, what's this going to look like in six months or a year. And I, I really think that we should invite um, a conversation with the assessors and that this might be a year that we consider a preliminary um, fall billing. Um, just, I know, I said it. I hate those. <laughs> but <laughs> um, only in the sense that I think um, this is really going to put everything kind of behind and we're always kind of, you know, in the last hour um, trying to get our tax rate set. And, mm -hmm. and if we get pushed back any further, um, I just... You know, yeah. I don't know. I think it's worth a conversation. And I think if we do just get decide to do preliminary um, fall billing. Can you explain that a little bit yes. for, for me yes, and for anybody absolutely. else who doesn't know what that means? If, first of all, it's a decision I think that has to happen really early. Mm -hmm. um, it does. Um, yes. Before the summer or in the summer. And, and there might yep. be changes uh, with all of this in mind as well. But um, normally we wait for the whole tax rate setting process our free cash should be certified. We go through all of our, um, you know, uh, new growth and everything with the assessors, and then it goes to the state, and they approve our tax rate, and then ta-da, December instead of November. <laughs> yes, we always are like mid-December before we we've got the tax rate, and we're you know, booking it to try and get the tax bills out before the end of the year. So right. preliminary There's billing would allow us to send out a bill um, by October 1st, that would be due November 1st, and it would be based on FY20's um, tax mm -hmm. rate in bill. And yeah. then um, the Making second billing would, would Clean up make up for adjustment. any yeah. um, change. And that's right. kind of what I don't like about um, the preliminary billing, is that I don't like the whole burden to fall on the second half or catch right. up Right, so it's a, larger, it's a larger bill on the second half, but. Um, yeah. But and as far as you know, continuing revenue this year and just not knowing how the schedule of everything and everybody and agencies and I just feel like it's harder and harder to get things done this year. And I just right. feel like um, yeah, I think the get... last city in town DLS actually re recommended yeah. um, towns that don't normally do preliminary to, to do consider it. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, so that makes sense. Tip. Have, yeah. have a request, and Just we something. request that is of there, the assessors. Is there a, the only thing I can't remember is, is there extra work for the assessors in this? They just have to use last year's, or this year's rate, right? Uh, I can't really speak from the assessors. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't I can't really remember know, if there is something extra they have to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We still have to have our tax rate set um, by the end of the year, but right. um, at least we can Get it's a cash flow I just thing. don't right. know what it's going to look like. You know, they're already extending us to allow the budget. What if they extend us to let the tax rate go yeah, into June? I don't, you don't, I don't have know. Any money, right? Yeah. yeah. So I, I think that's a very good idea, Barb. Just to keep us, you know. Um, so is that something that keep this you ship would steady? I can What I can okay. do is I can ask them yes. what the parameters of a preliminary billing are. Okay. I believe they also have some. Um, latitude in the new legislation to um, consider, you know, abatements and exemption um, expiration dates and that kind of thing. You know, so there uh, might be other things to talk to them about. Mm. Yeah. Did you find that phone call tomorrow um, mm -mm. for with Sean Cronin? I'll find that for you. I know yeah. it's somewhere. Um, I didn't, I don't have a notice about it. I only have the MEMA call scheduled at 1 or one fifteen. I, I don't, I don't, I don't remember seeing anything from Sean Cronin, but that would mm -hmm. be a good question to ask. Mm -hmm. We can you know? send that question to Sean. Yeah, that's true. Um, we don't have to. But they've just, had a bunch of IGRs come out. Yeah, if you, uh, I don't know if you get city and town. I think yeah. it is. Um, they had some links. I didn't read them all. Um, but each week they're sending out the mm -hmm. informational guidelines. I think the April 3rd one um, had... Um, well, I'll go back and look at that. The April 3rd one had guide, a guideline or a guide for municipalities getting through this. Yeah. Um, <coughs> I, 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 I don't read them in depth. I, I read No, them. I, 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 I read just kind of... Yeah. But I thought, you know, I, I am, I'm not an advocate of preliminary billing, but in this case... Um, it might make sense. Yeah. Yep. Well, if especially if the state is late 
certifying our free cash and stuff like that. Oh. Yeah, I mean, everything might get a little, yeah. I guess it was a uh, notice on the FERCOGS. Um, says this Thursday, DLS hosts a municipal finance update, recent changes and ideas for further relief. And that's on Thursday, April 23rd at 11 a.m. Sean Cronin, Deputy Commissioner of the Department of Revenue. Yeah, I didn't even Division. get that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is an email that came out from the FERCOG for municipal leader. It's an update number five, so I can forward that on. Yeah, can you just forward that to me so that I can get the number off of yep, that? Yeah, I'll send it to Casey. <sighs> There's so many phone calls every day. I know. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. I feel like I'm glued to the phone. Yeah. And you things, are. Things are changing every day. <laughs> I so you never like know. You are. I know. <laughs> it hasn't been bad. I mean, it's been so cold and icky out for the most part. It's not right. been that bad. But yeah, on gorgeous days, it's going to be hard. Okay. Yep, sent that to so everybody. I mean, I think Thank there'll you. be other things for us to talk about as we um, as we um, try to reopen, and I I'm, I would like to kind of do staggered <laughs> services, perhaps or whatever. Yeah, but that's, we'll look at that. That's down the town road. Hall uh, but with that in mind, um, I think you guys did. I talk honestly about don't think we're going to be opening the town hall for a while, Barbara. Yeah, I, I, yeah. We have to have more access to testing. You're right. And there has to be some other changes, yeah. and it that's not. Mm -hmm. We have to keep it's our government clear, yeah. going, and, right. and that means limited exposure sure. to our staff. Yeah, that's kind of the underlying I know. of all my so thoughts don't is worry. to encourage don't. people to stay home. Um, even if we do reopen, we still want you to stay home, mm. <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Um, and, and I know you did talk about the transfer station stickers that we're going to allow those to stay in force uh, through the end of August yes. before we start reselling. August we voted 30th. that, yeah. right? Yes. Yeah, I okay. believe so. We yep. did. Which is great. So yeah. then, you know, that whole amount of traffic is kind of set somewhere else and staggered away. And, right. and um, I think we'll, I'm going to talk to our online payment and see if we can get that um, to be an option to pay online and order your stickers. Great. Um, so you guys might want to, in your next meeting or so, um, vote the, um, oh, no. We don't the have new to. The stickers, right? This, yeah. This oh, vote the, the um, right. price. Uh, the right, the, the rate, price, the rate. The, you know, obviously, if you're doing the same kind of senior um, discount with the bags, it'll be hard to do that online. So, but they're gonna do it. They're gonna sell them up at the transfer station mm -hmm. in August. We're not selling any yes. until August. Right. right. Um, we might start online before that, but no in-person sales of the transfer station stickers till August. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Which is great. Um, and I think the dog licensing is falling under the extension of other licensing. Is that the idea? It's, in, in that it it's extended, extended until the order is lifted. I was just reading it okay. while you were talking. So it's emergency so, order. Yes, it's related okay. to the emergency order. Mm -hmm. uh, how are we going to let people know about that? Well, they know. They know. Um, we're, we could we, put we, a I notice. A um, Sarah's a been great about putting notices up yeah. on yeah. the web. I, I think the, the thing I wanted to ask or talk to you about with regard to that is normally May 1st is a late fee of $50 which obviously we don't want to do. Correct. Um, it is part of our bylaw, but if we're uh, granted the extension in this legislation, the, then, yeah, the legislation but thereafter, that I don't know if we can, um, you know, do you people want it, can't do get it to their vet to get right. the right. rabies. Get the to the people vet. who have waited and they need a rabies before they can get the dog license can't get to the vet. Right. So um, I'm kind of thinking that this is one that we just kind of, if, we, if we're able to, kind of turn a blind eye to this year for one that, year that yeah. we just need to i know it's in our bylaw i don't know yep. if we need to vote that or something <laughs> but maybe, maybe it's more relief we need to ask the the mm -hmm. legislature Again, I, legislature I, I would agree that we need to you know mm -hmm. not do it this year but right we better check and see what we yeah. have to do legislatively right. yeah, because, right. because it's i mean our dog you know, the tag is, what, five bucks? And right. then it's a $50 late fee or something. Right, it's right. It's crazy. Again, that's a safety thing, um, just so yeah, you know, course. that people need to have the dogs vaccinated against Absolutely. rabies. So, um, yep. Uh, yeah. There are still, you know, vets are still doing it, but it's still, we want them to stay home. We don't want them out. Right, know, vets right, vets. It's right. not easy for them. Right. So it's more So I'm trying to be mindful of our, you know, our deadlines. Yeah. Yeah, and our communicating to them But to that stay would be home, something so. yes. we should ask. But a lot of people wait for the rabies school. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah, they, they do, that. and they're not right. going to have rabies clinics until right. it's safe to hold right. rabies right. clinics. Right. Okay. So, with all of that That's in mind, really I would true. recommend, if yeah. we can, um, yeah. or whatever we need to do, to kind of 
okay. uh, vote. The, the problem. The problem is with the. I mean, you're. It's a really important to get the animals have rabies shots yes. because there mm -hmm. is rabies circulating. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you know, there's several yes. of the co uh, communities around us have had issues with rabies. You're right. And it goes in cycles. Yeah. And we haven't had, we've been in the lower cycle right. for the last few years. Mm -hmm. So yeah. um, it's, you know, the uptick is happening. Exactly. It's a hard, it's a hard balance between the, you know, the safety know. issues and then the, right. yeah. Because people, people are out walking with their dogs. Exactly. And, you know, they, yeah. can, they can catch it. So yeah. maybe um, it's something we can look yeah. into. And okay. I have a few things here where I wrote, vote, the select board can vote in May. Okay. <laughs> cool. I like That's that That's one. <laughs> Great. Okay. Um, the other thing too is the sewer commitment mm -hmm. um, that's coming up. Typically we um, send that out late May yes. and it's due the end of June and okay. we got to work like a hack to make that happen because we usually get the water readings right then but we try and get it all in before the end of the fiscal year just so it's nice and you know collected. Yeah. Um, so I'm just feeling like we, we might see that. a delay from you know, the water department, nothing against oh. them, but I'm just saying, you know, between the way right. people are working and the hours and the what have you. Um, so can we reach so, out to the water department and see what schedule they're on? And find out. I, I'm just saying, um, do you plan on um, pursuing the sewer commitment mm -hmm. with the same vigor that we normally do? Yes. And if so, okay. okay. But if... Um, <laughs> so guess what? I don't even know who to call. Tag your it. <laughs> yeah. No, that's okay. No, yeah. we'll find out. Yeah. And uh, well, it, we'll I just mean, see we, what they're at. I mean, it's if we okay. have to... Whenever they bring it bit. to us, we create it. Get but it I just done. didn't know if you yep. guys were thinking of any delay of any sort I don't on think the sewer so. billing. Yeah, yep. I, I don't advocate for that. But yep. um, we've made all sorts of other arrangements for people to do marriage intentions and oh yeah. election yeah so um so we've moved the election yep um to june 8th yes um and maybe some other things that we just want to consider is um i need to order the ballot soon mm -hmm. like i was going to do it tomorrow maybe yeah but i can't wrap my head around are we really gonna are you gonna stand behind absentee the voting right uh, you know, this is what the state is talking about now. This is the okay. newest um, thing coming forward um, in the House and the Senate is is um, voting by mail. Uh, okay. Some some cities and towns have um, adopted kind of a proclamation that there'll be no over-the-counter absentee voting. Everything needs to be done by mail. So I don't know how many absentee ballots to order. I, I don't know. It's just... Uh, it's what's a hard our, thing. What, I don't know how right, we, typically what's our, we wrap what's our, around it. What's our normal um, spring turnout? It's less than 1,500 usually, well, isn't it? Oh. That would be a banner. Um, would, it's been yeah, as it's little usually, as 175, and it's been as high as, you know, 1,500. So. It's when, it's, when there's a contested one, there's a, like around 1,100 or something. But It's only been that a couple of times couple in the whole times, time I've been but here. But, I mean, it can. Who knows? Yeah. yeah who knows? Um, the so, other things to think about um, when we talk about elections, and we can circle back around, mm -hmm. and um, this in May, this is another vote in May, <laughs> but I would like to put the um, warrant up for the election on the early side so that mm -hmm. people know, and, and if we have our policy, that would be great. But the other thing that we have some flexibility is the um, hours of the election. You know, normally we're 10 to 8, um, our bylaw says 10 to 8. Um, a lot of cities and towns are narrowing it because they're really encouraging people not to come in right. to do it by mail. Um, oh, we, we can't have we can't have it. In, yeah. What's how, that? How do you do? How you do have you to have a you mail? have to have polling. You do. You have to have you a have polling. have to set it up safely. You have you can't open any later than noon, and you have to be open for at least four hours. Um, so the very shortest would be noon to four, but. Um, are you so again, these six. are kind of things we need to think six. about. People get to work and they got to get here if they're working still. But I mean, by the time we do this, um, we don't want people to come though. So I what we, we really want to do <laughs> is do a huge it. campaign to do it um, by, by mail. So how do you how do you get it by mail? How, how, how are we going to sanitize this place? Right. Well, this is what we're oh, doing with I'll mail do a, now. A Lysol fogger. Um, they how make do you them think actually. all this mail is being handled <laughs> for real estate? So how do you, yeah. how do you, um, oh my gosh. No, how do you how are we gonna request do this? a, how do you, how does manage it? Request a there is a fogger you can buy. All that. 
Like, how uh, do you vote? Very easily. All we need is their signature, honestly. They can do it in a scanned email. They can mail it in on a piece of paper. We have forms online. Um, there's many ways to ask for an absentee ballot. Oh, I see. Ballot. So they yes. just sign a thing, ask for an absentee yep. ballot. The state actually said that they can um, do early voting, which really is right. not much different. Absentee, right. you're, you're supposed to only qualify if you're away and can't come or yeah. you have a yep. religious belief or, or you know certain reasons. But early Just voting, there's a no question thing. Right. So no questions asked, absentee voting. Um, so you just request a ballot, we send it to you. I, I think this is a COVID cost, so let's just let's yeah. v let's um, do at least two thousand or twenty five hundred, mm -hmm. and then yeah, and then so we just and I think cost. she's right. I think you come up with a policy. I think I, tell I them mean, what you want them to vote if you want them to vote it. I right. mean, because you guys have honestly, not. I want to mention it now so everyone can think about it, and maybe we can get back together at the next meeting with some of these things that I wrote okay. kind of vote next to. Okay. I, but these are some things that I, I yeah. think if you want to go ahead and vote it, I think I mean order it. I think we need to, to order plenty, you know, mm -hmm. t maybe 2,500, but the cost is a COVID cost. Mm -hmm. and, he, and that's what you would put it in our, you know, yeah. because um, this is not a normal, that we right. would not normally order mm -hmm. 2,500 ballots. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that, that would go into the COVID thing. Mm -hmm. They're talking about perhaps doing like, even in the fall, September, November, um, Mail in, <laughs> mail in. Oh, ballots. I know. That's because yeah. how are you going to sanitize this place? Here we have been locked down. Yeah. Everybody's sorry, been. I will die for the right to vote in November. Uh, yeah. Yes, but that Period. doesn't mean they, you can still mail so, it in. Yes. Well, you're going to vote. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Sure. But I don't know if it will. One way or the other. I don't know if they're going to require <laughs> a poll, a polling location. I think that all of this is kind of, you know, everyone's thinking outside the box and like, yeah. you know. No yeah, but how are we going to? I'm, I'm serious. How are we going to keep people safe coming in here? Right. Well, I would have to change the flow. I can't have people coming and going past each other. So I'd have to. I'd, I'll, that I'll have to work she's, on that. Yeah, but what I want to do is make it just so um, publicized about the mail-in. Easy. To, well, um, when would you request a mail-in? When could you start? As soon as I have the ballots. Oh, as soon as you have ballots, you. That's could why start I want to order them. And yeah. then we could start. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Start mailing mm -hmm. them then. Anytime. Do you guys you have want. a problem for like mm -hmm. twenty-five hundred? No, it's fine. I mean, I don't All know right. what they cost, but it is what it is. Help. Yeah, but and I then mean, just normally, put it to the cost. It's a, <laughs> it's the, right. I don't think you'll ever get 2,500 people FEMA voting. FEMA is not requiring the 25 match, so everything mm -hmm. just put into our cost. I think normally I would order like 1,500 or 2,000 uh, yeah. regular ballots and probably 250 absentee. Um, but I think it's going to be flipped. I do, too. Yeah, I do, yeah. too. Yeah. Okay, so order whatever you think you need. The and other then, thing no, I'm concerned going. about is because we do have to have polling, we're going to need um, supplies, which we're are impossible to get. Hand sanitizer, right. face masks, plexiglass for poll workers. You know, like how well, are we going to get, get all this stuff? What you need, and yes. uh, we'll, we'll get it. And but so I mean, that, that flow and, thing needs yeah. to be settled so that we can set, so we can figure out what to order. And they have to have a protective booth. You cannot have people breathing on it. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. if we're <sighs> having trouble, it's not just us that's going to have trouble like with this. So this is another thing that we need I mean, some support on. Set it up. Right. Yeah. But right. you need to know how you want it to flow. Can we so do it on a? Yeah. No. I can. Can we do it on an outside tent and drive by outside tent? Um. Does it not in drive-by. You can't do a drive-by. Like, they, they won't can't stay let us in the do car. A no. Why? No. I don't even think well, that that would... I wouldn't rather do that anyway. No. Yeah. I think, I, you know, I've already kind of envisioned it just because I like to... But uh, <laughs> I, I think everybody's going to be, you know, kind of let in maybe, you know, a, a time, few at a time, time yeah. checked in and out. Yeah. And I want to make it very unpleasant, honestly. I'm sorry, but it's going to be unpleasant, and that's why it's well, best could, to vote by well, mail. Well, what you could do <laughs> vote is by mark mail. off yes. every six feet oh, yeah. from no, the I, door. I can, yeah, she'll I can get that all done. It. Yeah. And then people yeah. would stand in the slots mm -hmm. of every yes. six feet. It's going to have to. And, and then right. everyone would just be allowed, like, one or two people in at a time. Again, I'm just going to say there's going to be long lines, so vote by vote mail. Vote by mail. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So let's... Okay, so we'll move, move ahead with that. Okay, so what do you want to bring really back easy. for next week or for the next meeting mm -hmm. so that we have decisions so we can frame What you these need things. to bring back to us for mm -hmm. next meeting is just mm -hmm. authorization for the extra expense. There's no problem with the ballots. I mean, there's a consensus. Yeah, that, I mean, we right? always have to order ballots, so right. I'm not sure that that so, would be a so cost. So that would be a COVID really expense. The absentee ballot that you need 
more of them. instead right. of right. That's right. Okay. I don't that, know if that's that is an extra definitely cost. that's definitely a COVID cost. Okay. So what you would be coming back to us with next the next time is what you need to to make this place. I think what I need from you, I, I can I can organize all of that. What okay. I would need from the board is for the board to say there will be no over the counter absentee ballot. So that's it will what be we only need. To mail oh yeah, mail in. If you want no to. over the counter, I make you that need motion. a proclamation. Is I that will what you make that me, motion. Let me understand that again, so we're not limiting people's ability because absentee to vote. voting people a lot of times would come down and ask for an absentee ballot and do it and here, stand here and fill it out. And no, we we're don't doing want it that. By mail. Put it in the bucket on the calendar. We're doing it by mail. Yeah. I will show or, you. Or um, they're coming that day and voting, which we'd right. rather them not. Right. Yeah. So Some do you have an example now. proclamation so I'd like them to do? So I make that motion that we. Um, well, I will send you. Um, yeah, write up. Oh, okay. So if she writes thing. it up, I will put the mm -hmm. proclamation on the next agenda. Perfect. Yeah. For oh, voting. okay. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. 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 And that's plenty of time. And, and I'll have the. Um, Warrant for the election ready for right. that okay. meeting too. Great. So we can get. We just that have to make, figure out how we're going to keep this safe, and then we'll have to contract with mm -hmm. what's her face, our cleaning company, to right. come in and clean after the vote. Mm -hmm. I know. Uh, I know. Before so, people come in the next day. You know, there are some people that say if you shorten the polling hours, that makes more people come in, but that's only if we don't do a really good job about selling. We can, we and so we have to sell this and we have to do yeah. it every I, way we can. People will understand, they have to understand we'll, that. We're, we're shortening them up because we'll we want to going. discourage yeah. you from coming. Yes, we really. want you to but vote we want by you mail. To vote. We want we need, you to vote. <laughs> we just right. want you to do it by mail. We'll, yes. we'll put it on the website. Yeah. We'll, we can put it on the website. We're in it, we were thinking of doing a flyer anyway. I think or I would like I to was. do, I've never done one, but I would like to do a, a reverse 911 mm -hmm. on that. Okay, because, perfect. Um, yep. So that's the once thing. Once we get it all. Once we frame it. Right. Okay. And so, so I want to order the We're going to end up now. doing two. And we need okay. the flyers. Mm -hmm. And we need the flyers. You know, yeah. that kind of stuff. Right. We'll put in flyers. Hey, Carolyn. Um, yes. Yes, Rocky. Uh, could you put it on the TV? Yes. Yes, yes it'll it be all the, over. We'll yep. put it on everywhere. Okay. We could even put it on the new signboard, okay. and we do have to do reverse 911 for more than one subject. Speaking of which, yes. we have some This money one needs to be its own. At mm -hmm. the FERCOG for our risk communication. This is risk communication. Mm -hmm. So we need to figure out how we want to publicize this. We could put it right on the town common. Yep. Yes. You know, we could buy mm -hmm. some kind of board. We have I think we have boards. Board yeah. right yeah. I think yeah. we have yeah. boards. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Yeah, we have the new one, but also the, we, we should put a, you know, the, one of those big sandwich boards. We don't, can get, yeah. we can we get a big a sandwich. Uh, yeah, Lisa has the good big size ones. No, a bigger yeah. one. Right. We can buy right. a bigger one. Okay. We have a few thousand dollars. That we have a lot to tell people, so yeah. We do. Communication. <laughs> so we, okay. need to, we, we should do. be spending that on All getting right. notes out to the Ethan else you got? Um, people. Hmm. I guess, no. Okay. I, th I think Thank we you. should say, what's gonna be the process on town meeting? Um, well, I wrote town meeting here, but I didn't write anything next to it just because we don't really know anything more. So, all right, like here's my question. Are we going to stick to June 1st or are we going to go to the 22nd? Those are the two options we have. I don't think there's much of a difference in I what's either. going on Let's in the world the at that first. point. Yep. I mean, we're going to have to figure forward. out the spacing. So yep. I, Barb, I have talked to Dan yeah. um, in the meantime. And yeah, Barb and Dan have discussed it. We've all been on a call with Scott Dredge over at uh, mm -hmm. Frontier. Mm -hmm. They're going to, I'm going to tag along, but they're going to meet and try to formulate a way to handle this. Um, I guess we're con the concept is outside. Yep. Yes. yes. And the concept is outside. I'm thinking best we're going to go visit, but I'm thinking best the um, parking lot to oh, near the gym. Mm -hmm. um, just because we can close it off at the road. The People can park lot. on the other side they can. They can and walk, walk around. around back. Yep. It's all paved. Yep. Um, so, so accessibility can, is key. You know, yeah. okay. And I can be there to check people in. Yep. Um, at least we would maybe have access to a bathroom if people needed it. Or we drop a porta potty. Yep. We'll just we can do that. Right. Kevin right. and I already talked anyway, about it. Anyway, um, those, are all, those you know, expenses though are all COVID. Related. Well, we certainly so wouldn't be having this stuff outside it if it wasn't for COVID. To see if what I'm thinking is the most feasible. Okay. And I suppose you would have to. We may have, have to, have to schedule it and maybe have a, a rain date, I guess, yes, you know, given and so, that it's a weather situation. So if there is a weather situation, we need to schedule that into the actual warrant. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so you schedule it in yes. your warrant as part of 
the preamble to the warrant. Yeah. Um, and that is a date we would have to discuss right. with Dan and with Lisa. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we so have Lisa scheduled for the out. first. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, you, what I kind of want her to do is nail this down with Dan and Scott. And I just want to listen so I can report. I kind of think, too, that people come with their own lawn chairs, honestly. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You bring yeah. As long chairs. as we've got spaces chairs, where they need to stay with can't, so there's can't that have six town, feet. Town, town, Keep if the town warrant. crews put it out, or if we if have to, we can get helpers too. And then picks it up. It still no, is a yeah. potential for yeah. germs. But if you bring your own chair, bring right. your own lawn your chair, own, exactly. Your own stuff. The only thing I can kind of figure out is hopefully the warrant would not be huge. We're going to have to. I do maybe think do we what need we have to limit to it to financial well, we're articles. Try to, yeah, just financial be, impact articles. Because yeah. um, and I've suggested it before, but it's up to, ultimately up to you. Just like she said, no, it's it going to be difficult spread out over a parking lot for someone back there to ask you a question or come mm -hmm. up and then they're walking by everyone. So that kind of thing, I don't know, that's more of a, you guys, how you handle their warrants handle and yeah, stuff I like think that. Our, our and intention Dan. is to do articles that mm -hmm. are financial. Right. That we don't yeah. have a choice. Yeah. And so Dan Either. needs to weigh in. I did invite him. I told him we might, this topic might come up mm -hmm. um, at tonight's Dan, meeting. are you on the line? No, he might not be. So okay. yep. what I will do is I will communicate with Dan. Okay. Um, and he can, once the recording is pushed up, he can listen to it as you well. Just, you right. just have to realize that from a public health point of view, there right. is no, I, I just don't see any I just, changes I want from, Dan what, to be no, involved, from right so now he's fully until aware. June. I but agree. But the end of June is going to be hardly any different anyway. There isn't. Right. And I don't want right. to go to a 112 budget. I just. I think the 112 budget is going to be way too much work because way you have to prepare much. it, get it approved, put it in place, spend it. And in the meantime, you're preparing the next month. And you're get doing it, it with every other city or town in this state. Yeah, exactly. No so how fast is DLS going to be able to get an no. approval back to no. you? Because you can't do anything until you get that approval. But I'm thinking, right. too, maybe like, like a rock star stage where you're in the middle <laughs> and the people are around you rather than being... You know, thought. at the end. Oh, I like that whatever. idea. You know, so like if you're in the middle, then maybe yep. we could have a little better interaction. Yep. You know, the cheap seats will be behind you. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> what we've done in the past is... We'll uh, have to play Freebird, though. Right. Uh, Colcock supplied a 40-foot uh, flatbed for us. Yeah, yeah. And we just put the stairs up to it, and then we were on top of the... Well, they, yeah, they do. I think they have all of that from graduation. Yeah. So they have offered oh, they have us. They have offered. Yeah, yeah right. they have the stage that. like that. Right. So I'm just thinking if we place it in the middle, yeah. um, depending on the crowd, maybe everyone could be in front, but yeah. if they have Before to be behind, kind of yeah. yeah, then we just exactly. have to modify it to so make it work. So it's a little easier, um, and hopefully that, you know, we can yep. still have interaction. Um, anyway. Okay. So. That sounds good. Yeah. So yeah, I'd like to move forward with that. Okay, sure. so yeah. June 1st, we're mm -hmm. going to stick with it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, with a rain it. date, and we have yeah. to. So yeah. don't let me forget. We got to talk to Dan about a rain date. Yeah, I, I, so. him and I are, are going to go over to the school and look at. Okay. The Do you space. think? Okay. No, if we go to a rain date, which the alternate date was what the twenty second. That you. That was the with, only other date yeah. that we could schedule council. Do we have to hold the election after the town meeting. That's up to her. I don't think. No, so. they're separate now. Yeah. They're separate. They don't work separate. together. They're going to be two separate yeah, warrants. Two separate warrants. Yeah. So they have different uh, voter registration sessions and everything got changed. So. Okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah. that makes that easier. Yeah. I do, if there's one mm -hmm. free moment, I do want to remind mm -hmm. people to fill out their federal 2020 census. Thank Very you. important yes. to you. get all the funding that we can. Um, Absolutely. So it's very easy. Everybody should have it by now. If you don't have your 2020 federal census, um, call our office, 665-1400, uh, extension 100 or 101 or 102, um, and we'll make sure that you get one. Yeah. It's right. actually easy. really easy to oh. do it online. Oh, very I easy. I did it online. Yeah. I did it on my cell phone. Super easy. Yes. Super very easy. easy. Very easy. Yeah. Yep. Yep, but they do have the paper ones if someone yep. doesn't have access to online. But please reach out to us if you do not have a census form because yes. we really want to count everybody. We it helps our counting. funding. Yes. So it's the easiest way. If people don't fill it to, out, we stand to lose a significant amount of yes. We really do. Massive amount of money. Yeah, we not to, to mention representation. As as and yeah. um, so there's a lot riding on that. So it's an easy way to contribute to the town, yep. into the area. And, and it only takes like 10 minutes. I did mine in 10 minutes. Yeah. Keep so. our 
Yeah, no, it's taxes because I had to read yeah, it three times. Right. So right. I'm like everyone else. I don't read very well. <laughs> it's easy to forget about. That was top of subject on our mind, but I now, know. of course, it's kind of Everything COVID done. faded. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So thank you for giving me so much of your time thank tonight. Thank you very much yeah. for coming with all that. We're Great. Yeah, happy to get uh, it yeah, done Barbara. And thank out. you. Good. Um, so uh, I guess that's all set there, and then we're moving on to, uh, yes. I don't know if, um, well, thank you very much, you will. if, if Donald you, Dubendorf you, is on the line. Hey, Donald, are you on? office for what you're doing. I am on the line. Oh, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. I, I thought I was on the web, web uh, so I could see you all, but I'm staring at myself and my computer, so oh. I have no idea what. It so it's, um, it's at anymeeting.com, and it's forward slash 812-477-057. Yeah, I jumped on Google Chrome, so I can't see you, and I apologize oh, okay. for that. All right, well, we can, we we can, can hear, hear you. you real well, so we're good there. I apologize for being uh, incompetent when it comes to technology. <laughs> hey, we're all learning. I, I was just we are say, all learning, sharp, Don. Sharp, please. Believe me. I, it's, and it's probably uh, better that I don't be seen. I, I've been told for years that I have a great face for radio. <laughs> So uh, just to kind of uh, preference the discussion, um, we had you on at seven, but we're, we're a little early, so um, that, that's good. Um, so this is kind of to, to discuss a marijuana article, um, and, and again, you're representing Sun's Mass um, harvest, harvest, and we, um, just to kind of give people a background, is that there are, there are several, there has been this year several discussions on um, two um, marijuana bylaw changes. One was kind of driven by the um, planning board and the other was um, instituted and started and presented to the select board by um, Richard Evans, who is an attorney represented by Sons Mass. And, and you're kind of picking up and, and joining in that, in that realm there. Um, and, I am. and the background of it was to um, we, you know, when, when we passed, just this for the public, but when we had passed the marijuana bylaws and zoning um, bylaws in town, we, you know, we we're new to that. We're trying to figure out what we do and everybody was learning and marijuana was new. So um, there was a couple of things that after it was passed, we realized that we wanted to change. One of them was um, it, it had said that in, in our bylaw that no marijuana uh, establishment could be within 2,000 feet of another marijuana establishment and schools and other things like that but really uh, n within 2,000 feet of another establishment and then we we realized kind of because of our our overlay marijuana overlay district the only place for a and this marijuana establishment retail was um, really kind of pigeonholed into the south um, southwest part of town right along five and ten um kind of right down there in the corner and right next to that is waitley and there had been talk that there might be another marijuana establishment that would go in the sugarloaf shops which would then be within 2,000 feet of ours and we just wanted to correct the language in our bylaw that kind of made it clear that when we talked about 2,000 foot we meant in, in our, our town, town specifically yeah. in deerfield so really it didn't matter what was in any other town or how close it was in any other town just kind of zeroing in that there would be one establishment within 200 foot, 2,000 feet in Deerfield. So that was one item that we wanted to address. And then over the, um, over the years and months since we've worked on this is that there's been discussive processing uh, of, of the marijuana plant at the specific facilities. Um, and I think this is one of the reasons that you're involved with this now, uh, Mr. Dubendorf, is, is to talk about processing the marijuana plants, which is really kind of, you know, just processing the plant, either taking oils out of it, um, and, and kind of up. package chopping it up, and you know, getting it ready to 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 sell. Um, and and we uh, right now the arbs bylaws don't allow that process at a cultivation site, and so. We, and we That's wanted, correct. Yeah, we wanted to correct that because we. Yeah, and it doesn't. It doesn't allow that. Uh, it doesn't allow it currently. Your current bylaw doesn't allow it at, at all. At all. In the RA, RA district. Right, and we wanted to kind of, we wanted to correct that because we felt like that was the safest place 
um, it has the security, it, it, packaging, it, yeah, packaging, all, all that would yeah. happen you know, right where it is instead of transporting it to another facility and, ha and where right. else would it go? We don't have a lot of other areas for it to be in. So we just kind of wanted to allow that processing of that plant at the specific cultivation facility. Um, there has, I think the, the, so there's been two different processes to look at these issues and, and, and there may be several others that people wanted to address. Um, Richard Evans' proposal was, uh, was a little more broad in that it was saying, you know, we could, we could do cultivation or, right now you can cultivate depending on the, the parameters of the lot anywhere in the RA district. And um, I think the goal was to kind of maybe narrow that down a little bit. I think there was concern that maybe you'd be able to do this anywhere in any district, any part of the RA district, residential agricultural district. And um, maybe we wanted to, and I think this is the intention of the planning board too, is to kind of look at that a little bit further and say, um, maybe it shouldn't be in everywhere, but we would look at, you know, as, as Carolyn talked about soils and different areas that we may think it's appropriate. Um, but, but that's a bigger, longer discussion that needs to take place. And with the way that meetings are in light of COVID, there really isn't a great forum to pull people together and have that really in-depth conversation on where we think in the RA district it should be. I think the planning board's proposal they're working on is that they would just not allow any more cultivation or any more processing in, any, in the RA district. And I think that's too, too um, broad and, and, and kind of broad in a negative way. I think it just stops any other potential uh, development of that um, activity. And I, I think, I don't think that's the right path that we want to go in Deerfield or that I wouldn't want to see happen. But I also don't um, agree that it should be, you know, carte blanche and anywhere in the RA district, it should be allowed. So, um, so again, I think that all of us need to come together, our board, planning board, public, and talk about where we think it's appropriate, where we don't think it's appropriate but not to, not to, uh, that, that's just a bigger conversation, more in-depth conversation. What we were thinking we would like to do with, um, is kind of a, is set both of those, those proposals and those bylaw changes aside and really just focus narrowly uh, because it has a monetary impact on our budget and um, we're gonna need all the money we can get um, with what's going on. And, the way the state um, is going to need to be cutting funds to to our community, along with everyone else, is um, this is a revenue stream we've been waiting on for a long time. It could be a larger revenue stream if we just focused on the one one uh, uh, one cultivation company we have right now and facility now, and allow that one facility to um, to co-locate a manufacturing process right there or a processing facility facility right there. Um, again, it would be safer, um, drive more revenue into the town, and it would not be broad enough to affect any other RA district, and it would let, allow the planning board and the town to really um, look at these issues going forward in a holistic approach. That's long-winded for me, but I'll just leave it there if anyone else, if you want to add to that. Um. Sure. I, uh, what, I'm, what I'm proposing to achieve that is uh, as follows. As you know, the Evans bylaw amendment is through the procedure for adoption. Yes. It has been to the selectmen and then the planning board. The planning board made a negative recommendation, and it is suitable to go to town meeting. In order to avoid preempting that uh, needed public policy question about the RA district, what I'm proposing is language that uh, we would propose with the approval of the town, uh, mo town meeting moderator to do two things. One, to allow a co-location of, of uh, manufacturing or processing with cultivation at a pre-existing site, i.e. in this case, the Sun's Mass site, and, <clears throat> and to do that by right. We would propose that at town meeting as an amendment to the Evans proposal. And what that would require is the article of, that the, the Evans proposal be placed on your next warrant. Then we would be in and out and we would, uh, Harvest would be happy to participate 
in the bigger discussion of, of the suitability of the RA district for, uh, for these purposes. Uh, the, the distinct difference between the two is one, the planning board says no marijuana establishments in the RA district. And the Evans proposal says manufacturing and cultivation in the RA district. And both of them are overly broad, it seems to me. And you've got to do some homework yes. to yep. find the suitable locations. So that's what we're proposing. Uh, we're proposing to not have dueling bylaws at, at a town meeting. I think that's confusing. It doesn't serve the process well, but to uh, proceed in this fashion. And that's what I'm asking the, the select board to do tonight is to proceed. I have the, I've, I've given the language to uh, the town administrator. It's in your board packet. So my question, now, I have a question for you. If we, um, if we go and move that route, um, yes. and, and we're placing um, the Evans proposal uh, forward, and, and, and then adopting your um, language, your, your um, yes. motion to change. Um, yes. do, um, does that then um, limit all of the other stuff that was in Evan's proposal? Because we didn't- It again, does. It, it, does. It, okay. it, it reduces it in scope and in size. Just and to that one item. Planning board, uh, and allows the two, town two items. to cherry pick and do what it will with a, a new, more comprehensive bylaw. Yeah. I don't disagree personally that, that you need to revisit uh, the way marijuana establishments are, are handled uh, in, in your zoning bylaw. Right. Uh, I just, I think, I think doing it with dueling bylaws at a town meeting makes no sense. I think. And the SRA district has to be looked at more granularly to decide where it's most appropriate, where it isn't appropriate. Well, the one thing I would like to change on your language is to is to uh, the one thing that he did have in his was to address that two thousand foot rule. So we we'd love yeah. to have another uh, you know maybe maybe another. Um, we have to have two parts. <coughs> we have two parts of that amendment: one to kind of limit you know to just that one facility, and then also to make that two thousand foot rule change. Well, I'm happy to do that. I I uh, okay. I would take I would take that. Uh, guidance from the select board we're happy to do that okay that'd be great but can yeah we, we're happy to can do we that. do it at town meeting uh, without the, public hearing the way it would work is the we town of uh, the moderator would have to approve the lang of uh, the, the uh, language it has to be in writing uh and uh we can do that and then uh we would need to decide how uh it gets proposed at town meeting uh outsiders even outsiders from williamstown don't 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 get to address the uh, town meeting right. without without a so so we'll have to work so Don I, I guess I'm I guess the amendments because because Dick's original um, um, you know um, proposal went to the planning board we yeah. are amending it so therefore it doesn't need another hearing is that what you're that's correct does not because it's within the scope. The, so, the law on that, the we, law on that is does the article give the, the the town meeting adequate notice of the subject matter of the article itself, and this is well within the subject matter of the very broad, much broader uh, Evans proposal. So we would be tabling both amendments, though, right? No, you no, no. you probably won't get the planning board amendment to the town meeting in June, largely because they haven't. They haven't, haven't completed their process right. and haven't held a hearing on it. Well, uh, we this one's ready to go, but it would, it would, uh, it would, it would uh, serve as a source of information and guidance to uh, the planning boards and the town final product to be proposed at a subsequent town meeting. Okay, so would you... the Evans proposal would die. Uh, it would not. Right. It would not proceed unless the town chose to use it right so no. that that would then die and the only thing that would come out of that um, would be the amendment would be the, this small amendment to allow it with that co-location for that one facility and to change the 2,000 foot rule and again we could wait on even on the 2,000 foot rule I don't know no no, no. We're, we need to fix that well 
Yeah, I can I can put that in there. That's fine. I, okay. I, uh, yeah, if that's in the I scope, talk. that's fine. I mean, yeah. that was in Evan's proposal, and we'd like to retain that part of no, it. No, when when I wrote that up, you know, we were trying. We were the first ones to get, you know, the overlay district and all that. Never dawned on me that it would that be next to another town. next. Yeah. You know, so we need to put in the town of Deerfield. All that right. has to be added. Okay. That was a mistake from, from six years one. ago. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And that, you know, I, and I I'm feel, happy. To, I'm happy to. Uh, I'm happy to include that that language, and um, I'll I'll get it. I'll get it to uh, to uh, Casey Warren by the end of the week. For okay. Sure. Okay. But in, if you approve this uh, effort in your motion, maybe you would direct me to also include that that language that remedies that concern with the the setback from another establishment well, that out was, of town. That's to me is the number one. Why I do have a question. And yeah, Casey's got a question. Don, to some extent, respectfully, I do want to talk to council about that because I want to make sure that it fits within what's defensible by our council mm -hmm. in terms of making well, any fine. changes. Yeah, no, I'm quite happy with that. So I, we'll, I just, that, we'll just that take this uh, under advisement. We'll take this under advisement, talk to town council, and put it on the next meeting. We do. So the other piece about this is if you're having a June 1st meeting, the warrant's got to close as of May 1st. Okay. Well, can we, can we so vote what on I would this like subject you to, do, to, <clears throat> can we vote on this subject to council's count approval or council's review recommendation? And, uh, review. Subject to review by council. Yep. Review. And I, so I, that. I think it's okay. I, I think we, Unless I just want to check and respectfully, Attorney Dubendorf knows why I'm saying that. <laughs> No, he gets cover yeah. your butt. Well, there's, there's, no, there's no disrespect uh, taken. Yeah. Uh, yeah we, none, also, none we also could try to get together next week, whatever Dave's schedule is, if, if there is a problem. Okay. So we but, could call a meeting if we needed to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I make okay. a motion then to move forward with it. You know, have, have our council review it. So the, and place for inclusion on the June first yeah. town meeting warrant. Yep, put it on the warrant. Right. So Subject the motion to is to put to put the Evans proposal on the town warrant, with um, and and instruct and Dubendorf to um, revise the language to include that two thousand foot rule. Um, which Dick's to which original. already is in yeah, is in Dick's in proposal. Yeah. Um, and that will be an amendment that I would propose to the town moderator to review and make sure. Correct. That's also a but I'm, I, I, I think it's an it's a important thing to do. Right. And then to, um, and, 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 and providing this is, you know, reviewed by town council, our town council. Right. So I'll second that motion. Right. Dave Wolfram, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Dubendorf. Uh, Don, I'm gonna, Don, I appreciate your Don, time. I got one question. Dave, Dave I know another question. Question. it's out of the uh, scope of the, our discussion right at the moment, but is there any way Harvest can supply to us what their projected revenues to the town would be for the next three years? Yeah, I, uh, for the next how many years? Three. Three years. I'll, I'll get an update on that and get it to uh, Casey Warren this week, I know, I know that, that work has been done. Yep. Uh, I think it was shared with the town when the, the uh, uh, in the in the house community agreement discussions. Yeah, but if, I will get that. Information. But if we're adding manufacturing, I'd love to know. You know yeah, what that's about. I, it would be nice. It would be nice, Don, if we could have an update from the host community agreement because that was done a couple years ago. And pre, pre yeah, I'll, I'll do that then, and that'll reflect. More, more current uh, pricing in the marketplace as well. So right. I'll do that. Okay. Well, the piece that's important here, Don, I don't know if you can hear me, but the piece that's important is this has a direct revenue effect on our budgets. Right. And that Absolutely. would be one consideration because we sure. now have to go back and revise everything because of COVID 19's significant economic impact. Right. Yeah. Well, and I'll get that to you. I, and I, I'll also. Uh, I'm happy to tell you that they have received a provisional uh, license Great. from uh, yeah. the CCC, so they are much closer than they were even a month and a half ago to uh, operation. That's great news. Uh, the one, 
done now is architectural. They have to approve security and stuff like that. But uh, things have moved along uh, and we're in better shape. So uh, I'll give it, I'll give you an update on that. Uh, Great. As quick as I can get it to you. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Don. Thank you all very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great night. Be well. Thank you. Be Talk well. to you soon. You too. You too. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. So uh, the next item is uh, select board reports and announcements. I just want to hit on one thing and then turn over to you. I, I had a meeting today with um, Ty and Bond, Kevin, Chris Curtis, Casey, um, about the Leary lot. Mm -hmm. um, project and we just kind of looked at some preliminary layouts of land and you know our hope is if we can develop this property we would love to have you know right now the property goes in and that's it you'd have to go in and then come out onto North Main what we would love to obtain or somehow work out is an is access mm -hmm. out to Elm Street we don't own that property. Um, there is some, some parties that do, and we're looking at ways to kind of ha open up discussions to see if there's any, any kind of way to, to make that happen. Um, so. We need to define that so we can define what the parameters of the project look like. Right. So that's part of the engineering, the definition of what we want the engineers to do. And it may end up being a phase one, phase two. I almost... Um uh, yeah, I can, I can see why it could be a, a phase project because I certainly would want to work with Berkshire Brewing mm -hmm. to have not only have the second access um, f just from a safety point of view, mm -hmm. but also you want to be have it landscaped in a way that is attractive mm -hmm. so that you could do something with Berkshire Brew and their pub. Yeah, if they're interested access, in the future, yeah. So access in to the parking lot to their business for you know whatever they want to do tastings or whatever i talked to Tours. karen and got a list of all the abutters um so i was hoping okay. that with casey's help to generate a meeting and just kind of say this is what we're looking to do um, i reached out to one property owner today and i'm hoping to hear back um but right talk to bbc yeah. and just say this this is all these we had a meeting i had a meeting maybe three or years ago now with the people that own the properties there and that was the beginning talk of what we could do, and I know a lot of them wanted to redevelop the backside of their place if we could make it more attractive there. And, it would be and so nice. And pedestrian pathways right. and stuff. So, so all that's kind of starting to get in the works with this design. But um, so hopefully we can we can get a meeting together again and say here's where we're at. Let's, you right. Know. I think it would be so attractive because it would it would generate interest yeah. downtown and people. You'd have some people could linger. Yeah, you, you, know, you could buy something at the pizza shop or the burrito or take out from Giovanni and then, Figs and step out back yeah. onto a picnic table, a little green park area. So there's park. I don't want it all just complete asphalt. You know, you want little vignettes of places where people can sit and have lunch and you're going to have you rain have gardens park. there. And I stuff. was just going to say, yeah. you want to do a park like atmosphere yeah. and there's no reason we can't do these rain garden things instead of traditional. Right. Um, Drainage because I mean that they'll add more. Yeah, more it would be a really and, attractive. Yeah, I think so too. Spaces so, to eat. Yeah, spaces to spaces eat. Spaces to eat. Yeah, and there's right. other you know there's other things that Alex mentioned on the call that we need to be mindful of, and so I think it was a good way to consolidate the engineering perspective we need to give them, mm -hmm. and I think yeah. that's that's one of the key things is nail down. A path for tie and bond so that they can give us the best um, I think you know when you talk about the abutters it would be interesting to see what the abutters envision because mm -hmm. you'd want to incorporate what they would think they would envision in for their businesses yeah. moving forward yeah um, how we could add, yeah. add value to their, whatever they want to do Absolutely. right yep. the idea is to have that you sounds know, suspiciously no like a meeting. empty storefronts and have all these really active good businesses yeah that'd be so, great so yeah. hopefully we can get that you know started soon and yeah it's, you there. know it's, i said it before but you know what portsmouth new hampshire did mm -hmm. that's exactly absolutely amazing what they did to that city with yeah. having those side access walkways and stuff yeah it it just made that area 
revitalize itself. Right. That was all forced because of their stormwater drainage issues. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They were mandated to fix it up. And I, and I, when I did the a field trip up there to do to review all you know look at all their green drainage, I, I, I just couldn't believe it. it was such a lovely place to walk. It was such a love. I mean, it was a beautiful day too. Yeah, so, but, sure. But it was a lovely day to be outside. It was just so attractive. I mean, it just want you wanted to spend money because yeah. you wanted to linger. It's a nice place. And to that's walk. the whole point. You want to have it attractive. We yeah. we're. We've had years of trying to make this attractive downtown, and it would be so nice if people I think really be, wanted to be downtown here. It you would know? really tie in nice when we do the common yeah. project, the sidewalks, the maybe right. close Park Street, you know, just kind of. The build tree boxes that. by themselves are going to have a huge really impact. Yep. Yeah. Because it'll break up the pavement. I know. So that so, was yeah. the one thing I just wanted to bring up mm -hmm. today. Yep. Yep. Um, do you have any items you want to hit on COVID I, or anything? I, I, I just, know we have COVID updates coming yeah. up right after. So. I, I just times. wanted people, I, I really understand how people are just really anxious. They're frustrated. You know, they're a little scared. They're worried. Um, and, and it seems like we're in limbo here. We've really done a wonderful job. People mm -hmm. have been really successful staying home. We, you know, we shut everything down. People are staying home. They're being careful. They're only going to the grocery stores for the most part. And so we have had no cases. Right. Our two cases in Deerfield were from before we shut down in the beginning of March. And the people have recovered and they're, you know, we're healthcare workers and they're fine. And, and as a result, we really haven't had any activity down here. And so uh, people have been amazing and we just have to keep doing it. Um, we're doing the right thing and we just have to keep doing it. Uh, I know it's really frustrating, but there is a lot of movement towards trying to prepare to open up. Um, uh, right now, the contact tracing is being done by Red Caps, which is a combination of uh, students and academic volunteers that move, came forward. As of tomorrow, all the contact tracing is gonna be done by the community um, um, tracing Col uh, col collaborative and what that is is with Partners in Health which is a nonprofit they're hiring people and they're going to have an army of people to do tracing and I was really worried that we're going to be left out out here you know this is going to be city focused and all that but it's not going to happen I we had a wonderful call yesterday for an hour and a half and this is the state is setting this up it's going to work. They're going to be a supervisor here so we can take our volunteers, encourage them to apply so it will be a paid job. The state pays for it. And, and as soon as we have to have testing, you have to have some kind of testing. But as soon as what happens is someone is tested for COVID-19, they will then, and they test positive, then they're going to be tracing. So contact tracing and, and going back and making sure that all those people are in isolation and quarantine just in case they have exposure. So what you're trying to do is get the infection rate under one. So in other words, if Trevor gets it, he's, he's going to infect no, very few people. We'll be able to trace it that he needs to con Dave and I and, and, and Casey have been, uh, uh, you know, contact traced and, and they tell us to stay home for two weeks and then we stay home and the, and the virus doesn't go anywhere. Right now, it's about 1.3 to 4. So for every one person, Trevor is, is, is infecting more people. So you're never going to be able to win on a, in that or control the virus. But with this contact tracing, I, I feel confident the governor knows that he's got to get a lot of people. They've already hired 900 people, and they're talking about many multiples of that. So there's going to be people that will be able to do this, and it won't be an extra burden on the town. I mean, it's taxpayer dollars, but it's not coming out of our town budget to support the contact tracing. So if we have testing available, when the testing becomes available, um, then we would should be able to be successfully contact tracing and then we can open up. I, I don't know when this is going to happen as far as the testing availability. What it is is about 30 companies um, that sell to smaller, to smaller companies, labs, 
um, hospitals, organizations, and they sell the different tests. And the tests use region, uh, reagents, that, it's a chemical, and they use swabs. Right now, it's pretty tough to get the swabs, and it's pretty tough to get the chemical, um, different chemicals. They used, each company has a different chemical mix, but it's basically the same chemicals. So those are hard to, to get. And, um, but once we have a reliable test that we can reliably get and that people have access to, whether it's a 15 minute at home test that we should, you know, maybe we'll be able to have, or if, if it's one that you have to go to your primary care that they'll have in their office or wherever, we will have the ability to test, then we will have the ability to trace, and then we will have the ability to open up. So. Please be patient and try as best as you can. We're, we're really working on it. Um, people are spending a lot of time sorting this out. And I have to say, I feel comfortable now. And I, I think we're, this will work. I don't know if you guys have any questions on that. No, I think Dave. it's, it's going to be great to have their, have their help in yeah. this. And you know, well, we just don't you know, know when that's going to happen. One of the things you know, we, can, we have to be aware of is that you know the social distancing is working and just because Deerfield has been real good at it our neighboring town in Greenfield has the highest rate per capita in the state mm -hmm. yes for infection and deaths yep. so you know it's next door so you know it's you that's why it's you have people to have to be really I, and it's it's not something that we can start backing away from right now you know, it's, it's just People have to be it. really careful. There's a lot of old guys like me around who just don't want to get this. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but it's not just wiping your hands and walk, walking around with Clorox wipes so your ha hands are cracking and uh, making a mess with uh, your hands. But you awful lot, you, uh, they, uh, awful lot of the COVID-19 virus is being transmitted on your shoes. And I, 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 you know, this is like new information to me. I don't know why. I didn't think of that. But... I, well, you when know, you, when wipe you, everything down. When you're coughing all the time. and sneezing, what are you doing? Putting your arm like this, and it's driving everything down. I, I, so, if you, if five percent bleach, you just if, you know five percent of a of a bottle of bleach put with water, and you can just spray your shoes after you come out of the grocery store or after you come out of the town hall or wherever you are. I mean, I've only been to the town hall. This will be my fourth time, I think, in a month, but. You just, you need to spray, you have to carry it around in your car or have it by your doorstep and you spray your shoes and you, and you sanitize your shoes before you go in your house mm -hmm. or before, and definitely before you take them off and touch them. I mean, it just, I don't know why. I mean, I really try to think of these things and yeah. I, it was like, oh my God, a little light bulb went off my head. I haven't been sanitizing my shoes, but the, fortunately uh, I haven't been only going to the barn and back. Yeah. That got killed a lot of viruses. <laughs> Some of the group that I work with have come up with a different alternative. What they're doing is they're buying Everclear so they can spray and disinfect and then drink. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> so the, um, I guess everybody heard by now, but the governor had, has extended the school closure. closure to the end of the year, which I know is heartbreaking for so many students. Um, and parents, um, but students, you know, uh, you think of our seniors and prom and all the sixth graders, all of the, nature's yeah. classroom, all of that stuff that is typically uh, rites of passage for, for our seniors, especially. Um, your senior year is such a, you know, such a, uh, an important time in your life, and, and to, you know, have that interrupted by this is just devastating for a lot of them, and my heart goes out to them and their families. But I'm hoping eventually there's a way, you know, to celebrate um, as we get through this. You know, I just don't know what that is yet, and I'm sure that there'll be innovative ways to. That's celebrate. already started. There's some communication going out to try to Good. reach out and and create ways to share yeah. experiences they need with to. the people it's, that are losing out on these rights of passage. And it's and it's every other. Every other class, you know, and every other student that Sue misses Antonellis their has reached out to Darius and and to um, FRS. So yeah. 
Just to speaking of, of the schools, I, I just want to say it's wonderful. The schools are doing a great job about getting the food out for the mm -hmm. families. And the senior center, um, about 45 meals, I think, a, a day are going yeah, out, doing five days a, a week. Um, yep. There's been wonderful donations. Sharon Pachorik has let me know of all the wonderful dona donations. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it appears to be that nobody's really having problems with meds because people have fill them you know, 90 days ahead. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I, I, if anyone's having trouble, please reach yes. out to us. We want to hear. Um, we want to help as much as we can. But it, it does appear that as a community, we're doing really well. Mm -hmm. So Very lucky. thank you. And as thank things you. open up, we're going to run into some trouble. I mean, it's just the way that works. But um, if we have good testing and we can isolate and, and you know, Maintain our social distancing. Yes, and just do the best. Just you be can careful. We try to and encourage people anytime you go outside, please wear a mask. Mm -hmm. You know. Oh, I did pick up, as people may notice, a um, couple of nice things. One, one nice thing is that if you go by Sugarloaf Street, um, DCR has finally gotten in touch and got right away. There's a lot of people to thank for that. A lot of people to thank. Natalie Blay and all the Melissa Eversource, Eversource has yep. been awesome and all of our staff here has been great and um, we so, just chase leads. So, Melissa, Sund uh, so Eversource has yeah, been very She's been wonderful and the and the base of Sugarloaf parking is getting re-leveled so you're not going to, you know, lose your car. We won't be stocking the potholes with trout anymore. It's um they're they're <laughs> they're pretty good. So um, it's going to be leveled out. I think it's going to be paved. I'm almost positive. We're that pretty sure it's going to get paved. That it was um, going to get paved, um, but I, I'm not, I don't know that for sure because I'm not involved with the project. But it's nice to see that happening. We'll have a nice level place to park there. I know it doesn't increase our parking. I may give us a few spots here and there, but um, it's you know, definitely it, safer to it's drive your be car safer in and park there. to get in and out of there and park and and all of that. So that's a wonderful thing. Um, People have to realize that. That is actually state property. And yes, they, it was. It's actually Eversource and state property. Yeah, That's, Eversource has the right of way. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they gifted it back to DCR. Yeah, they they so they were working on an agreement with and, DCR, and then Natalie. Yeah. So it wasn't you know, pushed it that along. the town pushed was it along. collecting it. Right. Oh yeah, it wasn't a lot of people choice. thought that yeah. was a problem. Yeah. yeah. No, it's good. No, so it's not so that'll be really nice to have that done. So we appreciate all their help. So I I stopped. So the Furcog had put together some social distancing signs and when you're out in nature you know you still need to be apart from people so um then there are some nice friendly reminders i put some signs up at the end of mountain road um and two at the base of sugarloaf so when you go there you're reminded please um i think they have some stuff on their bulletin boards as well but um i have to put a couple we talked about a couple other spaces to put them i have to reach out to debbie shriver Sh Sh shriver she um, may know of a spot. I'm, I'm thinking up on Ridge or just any of our trailheads. We want to put a water. sign there just to kind yeah, of still water is remind there. people. Still, still people. water. Yep. Yeah, there's still a lot people of people are there, there enjoying their, their, their time outside. But just, again, remember to keep, keep a distance from people. And that means only one person at a time can jump off the bridge? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody can no jump off the bridge. No encouragement over there. Collect revenue. We'll, <laughs> <laughs> we'll oh, take it a mess and go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I'm just going to plug my So ears. I guess that's all I have for... Um, I guess COVID updates at the moment. Yeah. Um, and then, um, so hitting our discussion items, we have climate resiliency policy for approval. Um, and there's other project updates. And I don't know yeah. if Chris is on the line. Hi, Chris. Chris yes, Chris? I am on oh. the line. How Hi, Chris. You? How you doing? Um, good. 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 Good evening, everybody. Good evening. So I have, um, as I said last time, I looked over. I read. I read it. I'm comfortable with that. Um, the um, climate, climate resiliency, resiliency policy, policy um, which entails the green infrastructure and, and climate resiliency policy. So um, I don't know if anyone wants to make a motion to pass I'll, that. I'll make a motion that we approve the climate resiliency policy as uh, presented. I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Dave Wolfram, aye. Uh, Carolyn Ness, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Before you sign it, Trevor, I'll give you a clean copy of it Sounds where it good. doesn't say draft. Yep, perfect. Um, and then other, uh, other project updates? So I did some research on the contract question that came up at the last meeting. This is what slowed things down, Chris. 
Um, we just needed to make sure we could find the money to do to to pay for this next round approach right. for the MVP grant. And I spoke to the town accountant, and she thinks we can find that money. Okay. Um, so that contract is actually in front of them right now. Um, this year. No. That's great. So well, I'll make a motion that we ha uh, oh, allow okay. Trevor or. Casey I think sign. I've got Trevor on there now. Yep. Oh, okay. So you haven't? Okay. okay, I do. Sign the contract with um, Chris for the next round. V, um, MVP it? 5, I think. It, yeah, five. round 5. Yep. Okay. Yep. I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Dave Wolf from I. Oh, Carolyn Ness, I. I'm Trevor sorry, McDaniel, I forgot. Trevor McDaniel, I. So what else do you have for updates, Chris? Because I just need to know what I need to start signing. And when? <laughs> well, For extensions. Uh, well, while we're on the subject of the uh, fifth round of MVP, we had a, a discussion about it at your last meeting. And just a couple of quick updates um, since that time. I have um, talked with Darius at Frontier, um, and he is definitely interested in pursuing the construction phase work for the green parking lot there. Um, and he, he thinks that he will be able to um, pay for his share of, of that um, project. The, um, the whopping road issue, um, I've been working with uh, Zach Chorniak at Tie and Bond, who's doing um, an alternatives analysis for you all uh, to look at that issue. Uh, his feeling is that, in general, that there there's not really a, really much point in replacing culverts at the Wapping Road area until there can be some work done on restoring the, uh, the stream channel mm -hmm. uh, downstream and removing the silt that's there um, because he feels that's the primary issue and primary problem with the flooding in that area. So he's going to put together a project uh, description for us that would um, identify the approach that they suggest for restoring that stream channel, um, and that would be, um, you know, hopefully that's something that he'll be able to to work on over the next couple of weeks, and we'd have something for you to look at in, in advance of applying. The RFP for the fifth round did just come out today, um, so that means we have, I believe we have six weeks to do all this work, which is not a lot of time, mm. um, obviously, but... Um, it's good to know that we are on the same page and ready to, to move forward. So I, I think we can we can go with um, an accelerated schedule here. Um, so did anybody have any additional comments about any of the, the project ideas that we discussed the last time? The, the only thing I wanted to add about the Wapping Road area is that, um, you know, that uh, farmland between five rich in front of Richardson's from five and ten to Mill Village that can now be um, the selectmen can designate that land as significant um, historical importance and um, so because in 1984 the Fu Food Security Act refused uh, or stopped be allowing farm, you know, wetlands to be converted to farmlands, but they now um, have reconsidered that because of food secure, real food security issues, and um, so if we designate that area, it can also um, go along with the fact that it's a public health risk because that's where our West Nile Reservoir is for, the, um, you know, mosquito disease. So we can say that it's. A public health issue, but also that because of it's a, a farmland of importance, we can designate it. You can also drain it without having to replicate the wetlands at some other place. So that those are two tools that we want to be sure we're taking advantage of when we put this proposal together. It's because you're not just restoring to the original um, stream bed. This was you know, landslide from, from Irene and Snowtober. It was climate-induced, disaster-induced, because I, I declared a I state of emergency it. for that 
landslide. So we have documentation to show that that silted in stuff is a result of weather, bad weather, bad weather events, and that we can, you know, we should be able to, to fix this. Okay. Okay. That sounds, that sounds good. Okay. I'll, I'll uh, get the procedure. Carolyn, if. Oh, no, go ahead. If you could. If you could send me some um, details about the, the farmland of uh, significant yes. historical importance H Hatfield, designation, that would be really helpful. The only community that has, has been, um, I mean, it was brand new. It's, it was in, done in December this past year. So the only community that's done a parcel review um, that's gone through the process is Hatfield. So I, um, it's just a downriver road. So what I can do is, is give you what um, I, I, it came out from uh, USDA and the soil, you know, the group that does that, all the um, designations. So I will forward it to you, and I will forward to you the um, Hatfield case so that you know how to structure the application. That sounds good. Um, one other update is I was in touch uh, with Keith at Regenerative Design Group about the Healthy Soils mm -hmm. um, demonstration, and he has put together a rough draft of a scope for that. Um, I don't have a budget for it yet, but I, I can share that with you by email, and um, I'd like to just get your general sense of whether you would want to pursue that or not. Um, I'm not sure whether or not he's going to be able to... Um, provide any any match for the project so that's one of the questions on on the budget end of things but I will I'll send you that so, information uh, by email um, what just to explain what we were going to do is have um, have uh, Keith who has the healthy soils contract with EEOA or e o e e a is um, the same people that we get the MVP program money out of um, is do a, um, a pilot in Deerfield of soil analysis. We, you have the soil types that the USDA are, has already put out, but it doesn't tell you what, what's the value of the soils as far as, um, you know, like from a food security point of view. Mm -hmm. So he, he would do an evaluation of all the soils which would fit into our review of the marijuana, mm -hmm. where would we want to put marijuana facilities or not. And what, um, and that f fits into our floodplain zoning and all that kind of stuff. Because you, what you're trying to do is again protect land that is highly, highly productive. Mm -hmm. And um, and and for the most part, it is here. But this would give us a review, and hopefully, it won't cost us too much. Okay. Anything else? Um. Yeah, there is one other um, update uh, stepping away from the fifth round and going back to the third round. We had um, requested uh, contract and scope amendments that we discussed the last time. Yes. We did get approval uh, today from EOEA for the FY19 uh, third round changes. And um, Casey, I don't know if you have the contract for that, but I was thinking of if uh, the select board could, could sign that contract this evening, we could expedite that process. I have the contract sheet. It's actually, it's actually um, a signature from me because I'm the contact on that contract for the okay. state. Great. So I'm, they had told me I could, once we had that all set, that's what I was waiting for, Chris, was to hear about whether EOEEA had approved it. So now that they have, I can sign it and send it back to Andrew tomorrow, right? Great. Excellent. So if there's any attachment um, one, documentation one, you need me to add to it, send it to me. Or, ident or tell me where I need to look for it. Now, okay. this, does, this, I will, does this include, Chris, you're not talking about the um, Captain Lathrop extension, right? Or are you? I don't. I don't. The, um, Captain Lathrop extension. It's the I FY19 mean, not, not contract no. that had... Kelleher Drive. Kelleher Drive. I'm sorry. Okay. No. Oh, uh, so Kelleher Drive is, is in the FY20 
MVP for Grant. Right. And right. Um, Andrew Smith mentioned that he should have that um, reallocation of funds piece uh, for us probably in the next day or two. Okay, so but the one is... thing I, I did want to mention, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I just was wondering how are we doing? Does it look like we're still going to be able to do it this summer, so we're talking still only like a month or so extension? Um, I think I think maybe a couple of months uh, extension would be helpful. Yeah. Um, okay. I think we can probably do it in one month, but it's a little early to say. Um, one problem that we've had is uh, that the green infrastructure project went out to bid for the tree box filters and rain gardens, and we got no bids for it. Right. And the feeling uh, of our consultant for that um, project was that there just simply wasn't enough time to do the manufacturing of the, the concrete components to the tree box filters. Mm -hmm. So we really need an extension of time uh, for really for both contracts and, and both projects. Because and, the contractors uh, so far can't we meet that. We haven't gotten any yeah, response from the state you. on our, our requests for that. <coughs> um, excuse me. So I, I think we, we may need to try a different approach um, because I, I've really tried everything I can to, to get approval for the extension of time, and they just aren't responding um, to that. Uh, maybe my, we can my sense is that it, that, that no, go it ahead. may be an issue that sort of, I, I think it's an issue that maybe uh, needs a decision at the governor's level, um, and that may be why it's taking a long time. Maybe we can have uh, Natalie, if we can contact Natalie. Or Pat Carnivale. Yeah. Or Pat Carnivale and see. Yeah, and I did get that email, Chris. <laughs> maybe we could start with Pat. because, And then, then if Pat can't do anything, um, and just to explain to him that we think it has to do um, because. It's not enough time. Not enough time because of the COVID. Just blame it on COVID-19. Right. You, know, you know, people aren't manufacturing what? stuff. You know, like the the boxes. There's a slowdown across the board. Right. Everything. People so, are retooling so, how they operate. Yeah. Right. So we talked to Pat, and then we um, about that, and then we also talked about um, you know just getting an extension just because things are slowed down. Okay. For, okay. For for, for right. there it is. And we don't have to explain that it was so tight to begin with, but just you know things are. We need a little extra time. Tell them we're still going to do it. We want it done this season, but we're talking like a month or two. Just sit, give them a month or two, okay? And two would be safe. All yeah, right, Casey? Go back up to bed. So, so I just want to understand um, who, who's going to make those calls to Natalie Casey, and Pat? Casey. I will Casey. call Pat tomorrow. K Casey can call Pat. Okay. And I can call Natalie, too. Well, don't call Natalie until you talk to Pat, because yeah. Pat might be able to take care of it. He's our governor's rep for um, our area. He used to work for MEMA, so we know. Right. Him. And then, um, um, then we can have Natalie. If that I can touch work base out. with Natalie at the end of the week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we can get Natalie to get on it. I wrote myself a note. Right, because we. It we have happen. been asking Chris, for almost two months for this now. And and they still haven't. It. I think it has to do with how they're handling the money, Chris. But they're, they've got so many other yeah. things in front of them, they just haven't wrapped their heads around it. Except it's now in our court and right. we've got to fix it. We've got to figure it out. Right. So what it is is they just haven't made the, the this decision on the extension. So in general for everybody. So um, I, I, don't worry about it. We'll well, I will on. call Pat tomorrow. Yeah. We'll make sure it happens. Okay. We're not going to okay. let the Kelleher Drive thing get, get out of the go away let me tell you so can i ask a question yeah. chris if you're going to pursue mvp5 if we're going to go after some money with mvp5 um oh, they're not going to be able to hear me um they can i'm sorry this i can't really hear you. yeah she's going to come closer all right i'm walking over not maintaining my social distancing but you can't hear me so and i can do this offline on an email if you want me to but I would like the board to be aware that if we're going to go after MVP5, we're going to need to know what that money is going to look like because we're going to need to put an article in place to do a match. 
now that we know that they want to see matches pretty much right away, whatever you get for information about how much it costs to do these projects and we calculate out the match. The reason I'm asking is the board has to close the warrant for the annual town meeting very soon and if they need to take a vote tonight so that we can include a placeholder for an article, they need to do it. Well, I think that would be a good idea. Okay. To, to so keep a placeholder. To take a placeholder vote. For what? So you need to take a vote to put a placeholder in for matching money for the MVP MVP five grant okay. process. Okay, I will we can fill in the money later. I will make the motion to put a placeholder on the warrant for MVP five um, round. Also, Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Trevor McDaniel. Aye. Carolyn Ness. Aye. Dave Wolver. Thank you. All right. Okay. All set, Chris. Oh, great. great. Yes. Th okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank appreciate you, all of your support. Sure. Have a great. Have a great night. Thanks, Thanks for, Chris. Thank you. Thanks for um, calling in. So Thanks. next item is okay. the Bye -bye. Uh, Green Communities Grant application <laughs> for approval. So, so the grant deadline for the Green Communities Grant is May 1st. Mm -hmm. It has to be in that system by then. Um, and this is to apply for the um, street lights street and, EV and EV charger. EV chargers. Yep. And so that's all drafted. I have to do that application. How, how, much, how much are they going to pay of the street lights? Well, I, mean, I, I got a you, call from Paul Vessel the other day, but I haven't returned it yet. Right. Uh, what I wanted to know is, are they still working with him, or are they not? I don't. And see, this is my problem. It's I bad. don't have the answer. I'm going to get in touch with MA tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, um, they need to really <clears throat> update us on where they're at on that policy, how much money we're going to have to lay out. Right. All and that so stuff. So I don't I really think feel it's supposed to pay for, well, oh. the problem is, is it has to be signed in order to do the application. So regardless of what happens. Then I need to know the money. I mean, I can't um, really sign a grant so, application so we without have a knowing our holder, impact. Holder for this money? I don't know because well, last I mean. time we did this, it was 100 percent. They paid 100 percent. Yeah. Um, that's that's kind of what I've been working on, and I tried to get in touch with Alyssa about it. Um, uh, but it, if we vote a placeholder, it's not a big deal, right? No, you can always. If we don't need a placeholder, we don't Just, have to. Okay. So listen. my issue is is. I can get the information ironed out, and if you guys have to meet, that's fine. Yeah. I have other information. I just gave you the narratives. Right. Um, well, well, let's let's just so uh, the I'll intent make a was to get the LED replacements. Right. Yeah. And including, the, if you recall, they came in and explained they would like to actually have that. Well, the purchase of the lights and the replacements correct. to the LEDs, yep. and then the EV charger. Right. Um, most of that information is in the narrative. Um, if you're not comfortable signing it, then I need you to have a meeting next week. The only, the only thing I'm not comfortable with is just not knowing what our match is. But at last time, like you said, we got $130,000 right. worth of boilers for, right. I think our matches was like right. a little bit of a time. So, so it I'm wasn't, not, it wasn't that huge. Same scenario, so that's the, I'm that good. was the question that I couldn't nail down today. Well, so. how about just in case I make a motion to hold a placeholder for potential match on mm -hmm. this because it's okay. still and then let's I mean it's gonna cut our operating this. costs to do these absolutely loads. we've been wanting so, to and we've been wanting to do this for years if so we can make it happen even if great. even if we have to pay 20% or something it's still mm -hmm. better yeah the first year would get payback oh right so I mean it was gonna be seven years we, if it was all on us working with Paul Bessel if they're gonna pony up some money then right and so we would uh, in our operating budget we would we would probably get it paid well back. we can at least apply for it yeah. so um, so, do you so, so have a motion to sign this at grant application? Wait, but she's in the middle of doing the motion to put a placeholder oh, for my sorry. article yep. on the ATM warrant, right? All right. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye, Carolyn. Aye, Dave. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Okay. So well, then. Question on the street light. Why yep. are we using FERCOG instead of you for procurement? I think it had to relate it to the green communities, right? I don't actually know the answer to that question. They may already have a procurement, like an entire um, procurement set up. Okay. I don't know. Um, the 
intent is usually to facilitate things very quickly. Now, Alyssa, keep in mind I'm coming into this. I don't know every detail, so that's you know, but I hadn't asked that question. I'm sorry, I hadn't asked that question. No, but they they, they could have already done that? it. And they have a template that's... They have a... T my yeah. guess is they have a template for this, which, yeah. you know, I don't know... Again, I don't know every detail on all of these grants because I'm coming into it and sort of picking it up as hit or miss, unfortunately. Well, if, if we have... I'll we apologize are. to the townspeople for that. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't should. know every detail. I'm sorry. You should know every detail. I should. <laughs> What is wrong? We'll send you back to the hills. Oh, right. Send me back to the hills, all right. Um, Without a cocktail. Without a cocktail. So do, we, uh, do you have a motion for me to sign this So that's my question. I do have to, I'll have to start putting this together. Um, do if you want to just wait till next week? or do, do we? Well, I'm, if, if you want to wait till next week, it just means that. Well, we don't know for sure if we can meet next week because it, so mm -hmm. let's just vote it. Okay. Because the worst that happens is if we don't move forward with the grant, I think MA will probably reach through the phone and kill me. Um, that detail of what the match is, that's, that's information that, that I can us. send out. That right. The match yeah. itself right. is an informational item, so right. I can send that out to okay. you. What so, needs to happen is, is that has right. to be approved so, for signature. Do we have a motion for me to sign this? I, I will make that motion. Thank you. No second. A second. Thank you. All those in favor? Dave Aye. Wolfram, Aye. Aye. Trevor McDaniel. I Carolyn Ness. Okay. I just am nervous if, when you have these deadlines like for next. I mean, this, yeah. the deadline is next. And Friday. they've been developing all the information. Yeah, it's I just know. I go back and I look through things and I think, where I, am I, I don't with want that? To miss the opportunity just because we right, you know, and they don't either. Right. And and they've done a lot of yeah. hard work on this, and so is Alyssa. Okay, next is a request for support proclamation for the family, uh, Mass Family Voice for Children's Mental Health. I did read this, um, and I understand the... The, the uh, intent is support mental health efforts. Yes, for our children. So it's up to you guys. I did draft it in a form that can be signed. Yeah, um, I'll just read this so people understand what we're yeah. talking about. So whereas the citizens of Deerfield value their health and mental health and that of their families, therefore they are proud to support observances such as Children's Mental Health Week, and whereas 70% of children and youth aged 6 to 17 live with a, with a mental health condition, and 50% of all lifetime instances of mental health illness begin before age 14, and even some children and youth with the most intense needs, and some who are insured may not receive services, and whereas children and youth with mental health needs in elementary, middle, and high school are more likely to be bullied, absent, suspended, expelled, or failure to graduate, and whereas recognizing the early warning signs of mental health needs and obtaining the necessary support, assistance, and treatment gives children and youth better opportunities to lead full and productive lives at home, in schools, and in their communities, and whereas the involvement and partnership of family members in an assessment and treatment of youth and children in essential to positive outcomes is essential to positive outcomes and whereas our nation's future depends on the health and well-being of its families and their children and whereas the children's mental health week was developed by families of children with emotional behavioral and mental health needs to focus on the needs of their children and families in celebrating this year's theme vision for health and happiness, it is fitting to increase public awareness among the Deerfield citizens of this important issue. Now, therefore, we, the Select Board of Deerfield, hereby proclaim May 3rd through May 9th, 2020, as Children's Mental Health Awareness Week. So, make that motion. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Dave aye. Wolfram, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, I, I think we have sewer wastewater treatment. It's an update, update. It's in case kind of we a, need to discuss yeah, it. And I, I think have, you did discuss it yeah. in terms of the billing. So you talked right. to. We did. Um, and I don't have the other 
project updates at the moment. So, so I'm just quickly on. looking through my email um, because the amount that there were requesting in grant funds for the streetlight project is one hundred fifty three thousand five hundred twenty five dollars and thirty five cents. Wasn't it, wasn't it like one hundred and seventy five? It's mm -hmm. net so it's cost. Like the conversion is sixty seven one seventy two. The retrofit is eighty six thousand three fifty four. And payback years. The conversion, the payback years are three and a half years. Retrofit is seven and a half. Um, and so I was what I was looking through to see what the there's a utility incentive. The total gross cost was 171,301. So the 153 represents a significant portion of the entire project. It sounds like it's about 85%. Yes. So we have to come up with like 50. So now that we have a placeholder on there, and I will, I was just look, I knew I had some information. I just had to find it. Um, yeah, but that's, that's what we would save in a year. Right. Or, uh, actually, we pay less. That month. Yeah, I mean that's less than we would pay. I'm just trying to find the other one. So the charging station. That's that's a very good deal. Um, Any, I can't find the notes on the charging station. But do we even have to have a warrant article for that? I don't know, and I I would I would rather have a placeholder budget. that we have to eliminate. Yeah. When you vote, when you physically right. vote the warrant. I would rather have a placeholder that gets eliminated than not have a placeholder at all. No, that's so fine, haven't. but uh, it seems like we'd even be able to pay for it out of the operating budget. So that's my question. I don't totally, and Green Communities Grants, most of the time the, the energy groups handle a lot of it. That's what happened they in Asheville too. Yeah. So I don't always have, usually we push the information, but I may not be read in completely on every nuance. And so nice. that's part of the issue is I'm not. We'll get that update then. Yeah. Okay. And so the COVID-19 has sort of taken over my capacity mm -hmm. to read everything that comes yep. through the door. So um, so you made a motion for that. You signed, yep. you made a motion to, to sign that grant signature page yep. for it's inclusion. Done. It's all done. Um, so next item is um, FY20 and 21 budgets and annual town meeting schedule and warrant. We kind of hit on that stuff already. We kind of hit on that. The only really thing I would like to add is just we'll be circling back around, Brenda and I, to the budget and a framework of sharing information with everybody. Mm -hmm. um, we've got to bring everybody back to the table and finalize the budget in preparation for annual town meeting. Mm -hmm. But first, people have to read their, wrap their heads around the fact that there's so much uncertainty that it may be difficult for people to focus. It and Brenda and I had that conversation this morning. Thank so we're going to try to circle back around. Um, this is not something we're going to figure out before no. town meeting. We're going to vote a budget. We're going to move forward. And we're going to assess it every month. And we may make changes halfway through. And so and it's going to be a three-year process. That's really how the I think the based on the information and the calls month. that I had last week, it's, I think that's how the state's gonna approach it. Mm -hmm. They're gonna come up with, and their budget probably won't be finalized until August, but they're gonna do a mid-year review. Yep. And Brenda's already started working on our best guess scenario for revenues, both state and yep. local. We have, we really don't have a place to go in terms of a percentage reduction for schools. So I actually have a call on Friday with right. Darius and the other three town administrators. We're going to talk about this. So maybe he'll have a little more information. And maybe Sean Cronin's call tomorrow might yeah. have some information. I'll, and and I'll, everybody's I'll do they are call. pushing information out. Yeah. They're just being careful about what they're sending out. They want to do yeah. some more background. That's fine. So, you know, the best we can hope for is more information and better guidance. Yep. I think people just need to understand that we're going to review the budget. Mm -hmm. I, I would rather do quarterly. I'm not mm -hmm. interested in halfway because it's too right. hard to correct halfway. Right. Yep. But, you know, sometime in the fall, September, October, we look at where we're at. And we and we we're going to have to figure yeah, and, and it and may we be that we reevaluate what we're going to do and then again and in December mm -hmm. right in December and then we should have a vaccine next year about this time so 
Um, I don't I don't know if we'll be on the normal schedule at that point or not, but we'll be able to sort it out. And that just like in 2008, it was two budget years beyond that right. th that we settled out. Mm -hmm. And so it's going to be impactful mm -hmm. for two. Ne it's not this next year, but the year after that's going to be the most impact. Correct. Um, because that's when the, all your revenues, you know what your revenues coming yeah. in. And then also the following year, because it takes another year after that. Yeah. So Dig out of a hole. it is And really that's exactly how it happened with the Great Recession. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, by we 2012, made it. we had started to dig out of it. it. This is a totally yeah. different thing, but we made it, and I, I would foresee that we would be fine, and it will just take us watching the budget. That's mm -hmm. all. And I, I think it's going to, you will see the MMA pursue as with as much vigor as they can, and it won't just be the MMA, and the Mass Municipal Association is the MMA. On behalf of municipalities, they're going to pursue. Um, trying to get some traction with the federal government to get aid to towns as well. Yeah. Oh, this During the Great Recession, that did not happen, but there's nothing. a number of, of states that are working with our state mass mm -hmm. municipal association to do that. So they're going to try, try to push that too, but it's, we just don't but know where we, all this we is. Have to be, uh, we have to pay attention because what we messed up in 2008 was we didn't have shovel-ready projects. So we need to be pursuing mm -hmm. the yep, MVP programs to get more engineering projects done, you know, get our pro engineering part done. So to make them shovel ready because and then we don't we have, have time. to pay attention sewer. for the sewer yep. we got all because, that going. you know, Dave needs to be able to right. whip in a application at any point for what we are going to do because mm -hmm. we do have engineering on that as well. So yep. And so that's why yep. I'm cautiously optimistic about the MVP approach because if we do have a shovel ready project and we can we have to be careful about the match piece of it right on the other hand if you don't have a shovel ready project you can't pursue another grant so you're right it's just a catch-22 in terms of how you're going yeah. to allocate that money and I think the Finance Committee and Capital may have the Capital Improvement Planning Committee are gonna have opinions about that mm -hmm. um, sure. but, but the town has successfully done a lot of work through using grant resources because they've committed to that. So thanks to the town and you guys for pursuing that and everybody reviewing all of that because mm -hmm. it had a financial benefit. Mm -hmm. And I think it will continue to. It's just we have to be judicious about spending those monies. Well, we just we missed out the boat last time because we did not have engineering done on any project. And, and that was how aid came to the towns was through Mm -hmm. The stimulus, and we just didn't have anything. Yeah. It, we, other mean, towns have lost out for the same reason. Yeah. Engineering is the most expensive piece of any project prep. Right. So if we have projects ready to go, then we should, you know, if that's how the money is. The balance is, is the operational mm -hmm. and other yeah. capital needs the town right. has at any given point. That's well, my cautionary comment. We need to look for sewer money. So that's why we have to go back and, and look at yeah. things. The only the other thing I just don't know if um, Mark uh, Capadona is on the line. Mark, are you on the line? Yes, I am. Oh, how, how are you? Um, I'm excellent. Good, so. good. I just wanted to, uh, before we hit anything else, I just wanted to pull you in on the Franklin County Municipal Aggregational P Proposal um, RFP schedule. Do you want to update us on that? Yeah. So for the schedule, uh, Denise Allen is also on the line, just so that she can okay. give you the exact date of other questions. I'm here to jump in, but I just don't want to make a mistake on the date. Yeah. Denise, are you on? Yeah, I'm here. Hi there. Hi. Hi. Welcome. How are you? Good, good. Welcome. Good. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so what we're looking to do is we're looking to issue an RFP um, on Wednesday, April 29th. It would be for all 13 towns in Franklin County that are participating. And um, we'd be looking to get indicative pricing back on Wednesday, May 13th. And indicative pricing is simply informational pricing. It'll show you um, all the suppliers that are bidding. Um, it'll show you terms and products just to kind of get used to what's available. And then the following week on Wednesday, May 20th, we'd be getting executable pricing from the supply community. And that would be actionable pricing um, that a decision would need to be made on 
by roughly 3.30 that afternoon, it would require someone to be available and authorized to make a decision and sign on the town's behalf. Okay. On the 20th? On the 20th, May okay. 20th. All right. Sounds good. Um, any, have any questions on that? Or we, I mean, we're um, still, could, I, could you just go over the, the, um, how the, how Eversource is, is going out to bid for their summer rates and how we have to make this decision, the timeline for our decision on this? Yeah, yeah sure. this is my, yeah, absolutely. Okay. So, yep. So Eversource goes out on May 5th. Um, we should probably know their, their pricing um, later on the following week, the week of May 11th, um, which is some of the reason why we chose in the 13th and the 20th. We hope that we have it before the 13th, but we'll certainly have it before the 20th okay. um, so that we can do an apples-to-apples -apples comparison um, with the Wumiko pricing. Uh, it was a, a push from all the uh, for our communities to, to move in this direction, meaning let's find out at first what the, what the rate is going to be for Eversource, and then after that we can make our decision on how we move forward as a group. Okay. And I don't, I don't, I'm not positive if, um, one thing that they had agreed on a, a group call, um, that they were all going to go together and choose a, the same supplier for the same term, but it allowed you to say whether, what you wanted, it gave flexibility for the, each community to choose whether they wanted their opt-in product to be green or their opt-out product to be green. Um, just so that everyone gets it, this is about um, people just on basic service on their electricity bills. Right. So it's a, the only, I would say the only hot button item would be um, it's an opt-out aggregation, meaning before this program starts, everyone that's on basic service would receive a mailing, and they'd have to make a, a decision. That being said, if they didn't make a decision, that is the decision, meaning they'd automatically get moved into the, the lower rate, if you will, no one's going to sign a contract where the rate would be above that. So okay. we know out of the gate we're going to be below that rate, but you'd only be delivering savings. Here's the good news. If they get moved in three, three months in, they go, hey, I, I didn't even know this happened. They can opt out. There's no fee or penalty. Six months later, they can say, hey, geez, that was really a good deal. I wish I stayed in. They can get back in without a fee or penalty. So That's it's truly great. a choice the town's making, um, the, the individual consumer, and they get to make the choice at the end of the day. That's great. Okay. All right. That that makes me feel that makes me feel better. Thank mm -hmm. you. Good. You're welcome. Okay. Anything else we need to do on that, or do we need to get somebody approve somebody to sign that? So my suggestion would be to um, on May thirteenth, I'm going to dial into that call for the discussion. Okay. Once we get the indicative rates, and I'll push that out to the select board, if. The select board wants to uh, appear as a group or listen as a group. We should post a meeting for it. Otherwise, I okay. would ask that maybe one designated member of the board participate in the 13th if you feel that's necessary. Okay. Um, but if you don't designate the chair to sign now, at the next meeting, you need to designate the chair to sign on the 20th. Right. Because that signature is due before your meeting that before night. Before 3.30. So, yeah, correct. you know. Okay. It's, unfortunately, it's right in between yep. those, the time periods. But the information itself can be pushed out via email. Um, I, w I would I just would make, make a motion, motion to have yeah. the, the chair sign because yeah. who knows who the, uh, yeah. you may be the chair at that time anyway. So no, because uh, we're in well, elections aren't right. going to happen until after June. Uh, normally it would be right. Uh -huh. <laughs> Jeez, I guess I'm, not I'm not in a rush. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty damn busy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, so, so I hear a motion? motion to allow the chair to sign. Have a second. I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Dave Wolfram, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay, there we have it. Okay. So I think we're prepared and ready. Thank you, Mark. Okay. Thanks, Denise. Thank you very much. Thank we appreciate you, your time. Yes, thank, thank you very you. much thank for hanging you on both the line. Thank you for waiting on the line. Yep, very much appreciate that. Okay. Not a problem at all. Have a good night. Have a good night. You too. Be safe. You yep. too. Thank you, you too. Bye. Bye. Um, cool. I don't think we, so we, oh, is there any public uh, comment? Is there anybody on the line, um, public comment? We have no public here tonight, but. Uh, no comment from Chris. Hi, Chris. How are you? Very um, well, thanks. Good. 
Appreciate it. Sure. Um, Grocky's on. No, no comment. I, think it, I don't know if anyone else is on, but okay. So hearing, hearing no comment. Um, any other town administrator reports? Anything we've hit on most everything tonight, right? No, I just have a department head meeting on Friday. We're going to oh, touch good. base on where everybody is. Great. Um, Thank them for all the I work actually, they're doing. Uh, just a couple things to follow up on. Um, oh, please. Yeah. You know, we didn't have uh, today, uh, or I mean, last Thursday was supposed to be that housing meeting. Do I know. You, we have not how, followed up with you. Yeah. I need we, to do that. Yeah. Well, I'm just wondering if Casey and all our free time. <laughs> could My just, copious free time. Um, yeah. Well, Kobe Sue Sue seemed to be so friendly, you know, Sue Conley. She was great. Yeah, she I was can so nice. We could just, you know, maybe you could just send her an email and just ask her, is there any, you know. What are they doing? Are they updating? Up, updating? Yeah. Is there any way that we can still meet with her? Or, I don't know. I mean, I have all that contact. I was just going to so we'll say, can together. you send me? Yeah, we'll, we'll get together on that. I remember I yep. sat, we sat right before this happened. We sat with her. And yes. Yep, and then she was getting she, started. She, we were going to have that meeting. COVID-19 hit. And then yep. it all blew apart. Yep. She, her big I know. We her haven't big done meeting anything, but and, meet, you know, when Hadley had to get canceled, that was right. last Monday or something. But uh, as far as I know, I mean, we're going to have to be making a decision on the library, and I, I, it would impact my decision to you know, know, know of how we can do this yep. housing, yep. if we can do senior housing. Okay. I mean, that's a huge... Huge possible thing to happen, and so we want to make sure she knows we're really interested. Because I mean, the, the, everyone's focused on COVID nineteen, but the governor's still number one priority is housing. So we we need to take advantage of that, even though it's not senior housing per se. We we want to take advantage of trying to get senior housing in here. Okay, I just wrote myself a note. Any anything else we can adjourn? Uh, well, I was just going to ask about Oxford Pickle. I know uh, you, you poor no, thing. No, you cannot ask about that. You can ask. I do not have an answer, though. Oh, okay. For which you may slap me. It's okay. <laughs> no, I told you I was going to bug you there. about it. Let's I just, keep bugging. I know. We just need to keep bugging. Um, okay. So, uh, motion to adjourn? I make that motion. Great. All second. All those in favor? Aye, Carolyn. Hi, Trevor McDaniel. What time is it? Everybody be safe out Motion there, and thank you so much Please for Please stay, keep tonight. staying home. Yes, We're you're being doing a great very job successful. We'll get through this. Yep.